Hello, Colorado violists. I'm Margaret Miller, professor of viola at Colorado State University. And this video is to introduce you to the two excerpts for next February's All-State Orchestra Weekend held here at Colorado State University. First excerpt is Berlioz's Roman Carnival Overture. Second is Mozart Symphony No. 35, First Movement. It's not the same one as last year, which is from the last movement, so be careful. A couple of things to keep in mind for both excerpts. Make sure you listen to and watch recordings on YouTube. That way you get a sense of the style, the amount of bow people are using, how they're creating the dynamics and shaping the phrasing. For both pieces, your metronome is your friend, especially for the Berlioz, because it's more difficult, I find, to practice a, a slow tempo piece than a fast tempo piece and not speed up. That's a challenge for me. So make sure when you're practicing that you practice with the metronome, without the metronome, and check to make sure. I would also encourage you to know what's going on in the orchestra around you. For instance, in the Berlioz, it's almost all straight 16th notes, separate 16th notes. So if you can have that running in your head, that will help you a lot in terms of rhythmic accuracy. And for both pieces, there is the element of phrasing, shaping, Articulation is also very important, particularly in the Mozart. Some general comments for preparation for your recording. Know when you're going to be making your recording and when you have that date, make sure at least three weeks beforehand that you are ready to go. And that includes your scales. Make sure that you practice your scales under tempo and then gradually speed up the tempo so when you get to 80, it feels really comfortable. But again, practicing with a metronome and without the metronome is really critical. I would also encourage you in the Berlioz, just for intonation purposes, to practice without vibrato, just to make sure that you're landing right in the center of each pitch. And then, of course, you can add the vibrato and be very expressive, which is, is exactly what he's asking you to do. For the Mozart, make sure that you use those rests to retake your bow so you can be in the lower half for each of those 16th note pickups. That articulation is very, very important. And then from measure 58 into 59, again, have running 16th notes in your head because the next measure, when the violas and cellos come in, you're jumping on that 16th note train. So it's really important to make sure you're in the same tempo. This is an excerpt that shows up on almost every professional or orchestra list, so it's worth getting to know this excerpt. So the challenges, A, playing an E major, playing an A major, making sure that you're very comfortable with those two scales. E major is not a viola-friendly scale, but it's a really important scale for us to know for orchestral literature. So as you can see from his marking, he writes on Dante Sostenuto, so Andante being a walking speed, sustenuto being sustained. I would really encourage you to imagine that you're a singer for this piece, that you really have to sing through your bow changes to make sure that your vibrato is consistent so it sounds very vocal in a lot of ways. The other thing that's very, very important 
or to pay attention to his gestures in the music. The infamous hairpins. These are incredibly important for what he has in mind for phrasing. So make sure when you get to the second line, that F sharp quarter note on the second beat does not need a lot of bow. It's at the low end of the hairpin, so you don't need much bow. Practice with the metronome. In some ways, this is one of the harder excerpts to prepare because it's difficult to maintain a slower tempo. One thing that will help, besides listening to it and watching some live performances on YouTube, is to know that the accompaniment is all 16th notes. So if you can develop that running loop of 16th notes in your head while you're practicing, that will help you also to make sure that you're not losing time. I would also encourage you to, as you get closer to making your recording, record, record yourself, record yourself a lot with the metronome, then without the metronome, then go back and check your metronome to make sure that you're staying in tempo. I think the biggest danger spots for me to make sure I don't rush is two bars before rehearsal number three. Sixteenth notes in the orchestra pretty much stop there for two bars, but it's really important that those eighth notes don't roll downhill. And of course the crescendo at the end and being as expressive as possible. I love it when composers give us that opportunity to be expressive. next excerpt is from the first movement of the Mozart Symphony number no. 35. Those of you that auditioned last year, you remember that nasty excerpt from the last movement. This is from the first movement of this piece. Personally, I find Mozart one of the more challenging composers to play well. I like to think of it as being like crystal. Things need to sparkle. So I would really encourage you, again, build up your speed with your metronome. Certainly practice it in quarter notes first, even though the time signature is in cut time. That way you get to feel the rests really completely. So a forte in Mozart is different than a forte in Berlioz. So you have to be really careful not to crush your sound on the fortes. Think it's a warm, open sound as opposed to a heavy, more romantic sound. One of the other challenges, the first big one happens in measure 43 and measures like this, making sure that the downbeat has more weight than the upbeat. Again, it's a stylistic component of playing Mozart that's very, very challenging to achieve. So if you lean a little bit more on the downbeat, and use less bow and play lighter on the upbeat, that will help that to come across. And make sure in those rests, every time you have them, use that as an opportunity to retake your bow so you're in a good spot for the articulation on the 16th note. And again, when you listen to this piece, and I encourage you with, for both excerpts, follow along with the score as well, not just the viola part. It's so important to know what the rest of the orchestra is doing around you. Believe it or not, that does come across on a recording. It, someone can hear and say, oh, this person knows that the violins are doing this here. So for instance, measure 58, this is really critical, besides counting very carefully, have 16th notes going in your head because that's what the violins are doing. And violas and cellos have to, quote, jump on the moving train with the 16th notes in the next bar. So you'll notice that when you have your metronome on, sometimes you can feel a little sluggish getting started. You don't have to overplay the forte. Think of it as a character. I like to think of it as something that's very excited. Good luck with your recordings, and I look forward to seeing you all here in February. Thank you.